Hey guys, it's Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and today we're going to take a look at a game from Yellow called Katara. Katara is a game for two to four players from Eric Vogel, which you may recognize from a game that we like called Don't Turn Your Back. And what you're doing in this is you are gonna be taking on a tribe of people and you're trying to dominate the countryside. Effectively what you're doing is you are moving around the board trying to claim territories. And if you get where someone else is, you can attack them. But attacking is not like you would think. It's kind of an area control, but to call it that will be underselling some of the other cool elements of this game. So enough talking about it now. Let's go to the table, check it out. All right, so here's a game of Katara, all set up for two players. The cool thing about this game is there's a map for two, there's a map for three, and there's a map for four. So the two-player map, which is a good thing, is smaller because there's less people. So I dig that. So let's talk about setup. To set up, you're going to give each player a player card, which is basically going to have some what you're going to want to do on your points, kind of what the cards do, a turn summary, and a color, which is basically going to mean you're going to get these colored pieces. And then each player is going to get a level zero card here that's going to tell you some actions that you can take when we start and it's going to give you three warriors that you can put on to a home space so in this case i put red in the, the corner and i put green in the other corner all right then you're going to um, shuffle the cards according to number the, the numbers go one to five so you're going to shuffle all the ones all the twos threes four and fives so put five on the bottom four three two one one on top then you're going to flip six and then what you're going to do is you're going to put your score marker on zero and you're gonna put some scoring tokens in this bag, which you're gonna to get to when you attack with your hero. So that's kind of that. Now let's talk about what you're gonna do in your turn. On your turn, you're gonna do all five phases that you can see on this player card. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna draft. So I've given green the first player marker, so let's go ahead and draft. So how are we gonna draft, you might ask? Well, that's where these cards next to our kingdom are going to come into play. So the top row here is next to your draft. So it's going to tell you where you can draft from. So if you look at these cards up here, I have two. I can draft this card or this card, because that's all I can do. So these are the two cards I'm allowed to draft. And I need to put this at the other end, actually. So hang on, I'll put it at the wrong side, because I always do that. All right, so I can draft these two cards. These cards are gonna let me give me additional movement, a different recruit, maybe some points. So that's kind of what I'm looking at. So what I wanna do is I'm gonna take this card. So I drafted this card. This is going to let me draft an you know from a further further down the line in a future turn. I'm going to get a warrior. So I'll take a warrior. When I um, so that was drafting. Next thing we're going to do is we're going to recruit. You're going to recruit from the card the characters on the card that you just took. So in this case, I took this card. Give me one warrior. I have to put the warrior in a place where I have worker or um, warriors or you know master animal or heroes whatever. I, this has to go someplace where I've conquered. So that's that. Then I have movement. That's step three. What you're gonna do on movement is you are going to be able to move however many move actions that you have. That's where this kind of comes in handy so you know how many times you've moved. So I'm gonna take this, I have two moves. So for my first movement, I want to come over here. I'm gonna start making my way across the board. So that's movement number one. Then for movement number two, I'm actually gonna come over into here and just take over another territory. So now I own three Plains areas and I'll explain why that's important in a minute. So that was number three. Then we're going to score You're going to score a few different ways if you have a card that has That symbol on the bottom, which is your score marker. You will get a point If you ever have your master animal, which is the you know, the horse looking guy in a ruin space, which are the the forest you're gonna get two points and if you have any tokens that you've received from conquering using your hero you're going to keep one of them on your board and you're going to score those at the end and the rest will go in the bag. So if I've conquered and I get three tokens, I'll keep basically probably the highest one on my board face down, put the rest in the bag. So that's scoring. Then what you're going to do is we have to manage. So that's going to do a couple things. So what happens here is you have to feed your cards. So effectively, you know, feeding your citizens. The way this works is you have to have a warrior in a grassland or a, a plains 
forget what it's actually called, but the yellow spaces on the board to feed a card. So in this case, I have three, I've conquered three territories of the yellow so I can feed three cards. I only have two. So all my cards have been fed. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna slide these cards down and we are going to flip a new one. And that is the end of my turn. Easy as that. Now, red's gonna do the same thing. They're gonna draft. They can draft from the first two cards. So they're actually gonna take this one because they wanna get a hero out. So they drafted a card, now they're gonna recruit. So they get a rhino hero and a warrior and they have to go into the location where they have people. So they're gonna do that. All right, so that is the recruit. Now they're gonna move. They only have two movement just like me. So they're gonna take movement number one and they wanna start getting towards me. So they're gonna take these three dudes over here. Actually, they'll take all four. That's movement number one and then movement number two we're gonna bring them all over here. All right, done. Then we're gonna score. I have nothing to score, I have no points. I, I don't have my master animal in the green area and I don't have any tokens, so I'm done. Then we have to manage. Uh, so I have to feed my cards. I've controlled two yellow areas on the board, so I'm good there. Uh, we will slide the cards down, flip a new one. And in a two player game, you're also gonna remove the leftmost card out of the game which is just gonna help you kinda of speed up the game a little bit and cycle through some more cards. And that is that. So then it will be Red's turn to be first player. So they'll do that and then we will keep going. I'm gonna tell you how battle works and I'm gonna tell you how the end of the game works because those are the only two things that I haven't shown you. Basically everything I showed you is how the game's gonna take place. But I wanna show you how a battle works so you can kinda of see the tokens and all that. So. We'll just, it's Red's turn, so we'll take his turn because I think you'll be able to see a battle at that point. So they get a draft. They can draft from the first two cards. So they're going to take this one. So that'll give them a, mass, a spirit animal or a master animal. And they can put that anywhere they want where there's a person, and I'm going to put it right there. So I drafted, and I recruited. I put my person out on the board. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to move. I have two movements. So for my first movement... I'm going to bring all of these people into here. And this is gonna cause a battle. So the way battles work is, you have to have the number of opponents plus one to attack. So in this case, I need to have two or more to attack this person. Here's what happens. This person loses, has to retreat to the closest conquered territory that they have. So I would have to go down here. And then, because I sent my hero into battle, I draw a token. And the tokens look like this. They're that on the front, and then they're gonna have points on the back from two to five. So I have a five point token, which I would keep that face down. All right, now I have one more movement. So I'm gonna go ahead. I can't attack again, because there's three there and I need to be one or more. So I'm just gonna actually, I'm gonna bring my hero back here to try to defend that guy. All right, so that's my two movement. Then I'm gonna score. So scoring is gonna actually work here. So I have my master animal in a ruin space, so that gives me two points. So I get two points. Then I have a token. So I would look at my tokens, I would keep one of them. So in this case, I'll keep this one, put it on my board, and that will score at the end. Then I'll manage, which means I have to feed my cards. I have one, two, three planes ter territories. I have three cards, good to go. Then I'll slide the card down. All right, and that was the end of my turn. Then green would take their turn, so on and so forth. The game is gonna end at the end of the round when a five card shows up. So once a card is flipped up into the drafting section, you'll finish that round, which is where first player marker comes in handy. And then you're gonna count up your points, which is essentially everything on the board, plus these, um, and I think that's it. There might be another way to score points, but it's mostly what's on your board, plus points that you have tucked away down here. And that is how you play Katara. So let's go up to the top, see what we think about it. All right, well, that was Katara. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like this game. Um, so first thing I wanna talk about is the production. So I mentioned the different maps in the overview. So you saw the two player one, which is this one right here, you know, the little square, just regular square deal. Then there's two more for three and four players, which I think is super awesome. And I haven't seen it done like this since Small World. So here's the four player side, or yeah, the three player sides on this side. 
that's awesome. Every game should do that. It makes scaling super easy. You don't have to change a ton of rules. Amazing. Another thing I like is custom meeples, the hero, the warrior, which is pretty dinky, but it makes sense because you gotta kind of justify the size. Then the master animal, so cool. So customized meeples are always awesome. And the insert, I don't know if you can see this this well, that well, but everything hangs out in there, has a great spot for everything. Just everything fits super nice, I dig it. So the production's top notch. I can't have zero complaints there. Yellow is usually pretty good at that. They, you know, they're not like days of wonder or whatever, but they're usually pretty good at having some quality production. So this one is no exception. So let's talk about the gameplay. So I mentioned this was an area control, but I also stated that might be underselling it a little bit. And the reason I say that is, because I think this game is more about drafting those cards, which is my favorite element of this whole game. So as you saw in the overview, on your turn, you're gonna be able to draft some cards based on how far down the line you can draft. So at the beginning, you can draft one of the first two cards. But as you draft other cards into your kingdom or your tableau, you're gonna be able to move down that, that line faster. So you might be able to get to level two or a level three card, which is way more powerful than the level ones. So then you're gonna use those cards to determine which kind of workers you're recruiting, how much you can move, you're gonna score any points, and how many further cards you can draft. There's also two decks, I was playing with the blue deck. There's also a red deck, which is a little more advanced, which some of the cards will have a little food icon, which will let you use that card to feed another card, which is pretty cool but I didn't use that. It doesn't change the game a ton, but it does add a little bit more thinkiness to what you're drafting. So then you're gonna move moving around based on the level you're allowed to move per your cards, and you're trying to conquer territories. The attacking is super simple. If you, there's two in a space and I have three guys, I move in, I have more than you, you have to retreat. Predetermined or deterministic combat, I think is what it's called. I don't do a lot of combat games, so I don't know the names and stuff like that. But I like that I can see with my eyes what's going on. I don't have to roll a die. I don't have to flip a card. I just know, hey, there's two right there. I have three. I can move in there, take it out, done. Nobody dies. You just have to retreat to another territory. And then on the next turn, maybe you'll have a nice army. You can go start wiping me out. So it's just kind of like a, a tug of war type thing of who's going to conquer all these territories. Where am I going to put my people so they can score some points? Do I want to attack with my rhino a bunch of times so I can get some tokens and hopefully get a five-pointer? Just pretty cool for like a simple area control game the card drafting and the way that you have to actually think about where you're going on the map is awesome and keeping a warrior behind on the planes so you can feed your cards another level of thinkingness which i dig so yeah this is a cool game um it's eric vogel i don't know a ton of games that he's done don't turn your back which we love video on our channel i'll link to it and this one both are good games both are very different don't turn your back to deck builder with a macabre theme. This is a cool like early civilization game with some attacking and some cool card drafting. So very different games, but definitely both good games in their own right. So I'm going to give this a BGM accepted seal because I dig it. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10 on BGG, which is a 3.75 out of 5 on our arbitrary wrench scale. That means nothing, but we like to give it the games that we enjoy. And that's what we're going to do. So that was Katara from Yellow. I'm Jason with the Board Game Mechanics, and as always, keep gaming.